All right, so aside from get requests and post requests, there are also a bunch of other HTTP request methods that you can use to handle in your Express API. However, you don't need to know all of them, but there are three others that I think is worth knowing about, okay? Because you will be seeing them everywhere in documentation when you're working with APIs, and you yourself will need to use it as well. So let's talk about it. So the other three are the put request, patch request, and delete request methods, okay? Put and patch requests both are used to update data, but they are technically different on how you update data. So to better understand put requests, let's first talk about patch request first. So let's say, for example, you want to update some data on the backend. Using our user's example, let's say I want to update one of my user's uh, username. So maybe I want to change my username from Anson to Anson123. I would do that using a patch request. Okay, a patch request updates a record, but it updates it partially. And what that means is you're not updating the entire user itself. You're only updating a partial field. You're only updating a portion of that entire user record. So instead of updating everything of that user record, you're only updating username. You're not updating username and display name. Okay. So hopefully that part makes sense. Now with put request, you're not actually just updating a partial entity of that record. You're updating the entire resource. Okay, so whenever you make a request to update something on the database using a put request, you're including every single field in that request body, even if not updating it, because if you don't include that field, then those fields will pretty much be removed. Or if you're using like a SQL database, those fields will be null. So the next time you fetch the data, those fields will always be null. If, of course, if you're using MongoDB, they'll just be updated in the document and they won't even appear at all so hopefully that makes sense so so think of it like this put is for updating the entire record okay so even if you only care about updating username but you don't want to update display name then what you need to do is when you update the username to whatever it is that you want you need to make sure that you include the current value of whatever display name is otherwise it will be overridden with patch you can pretty much just update only a portion of that user record. So you don't need to include anything that you're not trying to update. So if you update only the display name, you only include the display name in the request body. You don't need to include the username. And if you only want to update the username, then you don't include the display name. So hopefully that helps you better understand the difference between put and patch. Delete is pretty straightforward. It's used to pretty much just delete records from the database. Okay, so you only really use it if you need to delete a resource, whether you're deleting a user or if you're deleting a product or an order, whatever it is. Okay, so hopefully that explanation makes sense. So let's go ahead and set up a put request for updating a user by its ID. So we're going to reference app and call the put method. And for the path, I'm going to reuse the path that we used earlier for our get users by ID request. So I'll just copy this up top over here and paste this over here. And like I said before, we can use the same path, but as long as we have different request methods, it will still work fine. Okay. And we'll now pass in the request handler function as a second argument in the put method call. So now we also need to make sure we are uh, grabbing the route parameter from the request body or from the request object. And we also want to make sure we're grabbing the request body as well from the request object. So let's do some destructuring. So I'll go ahead and from the request object, I will go ahead and destructure body. So I'm going to get the request body because we need that because that is what is going to contain the data that we're using to update the current user object. And then I'm also going to destructure the params object and then I'm from the params object right over here, I'm going to destructure ID just like that. Now let's go ahead and parse the ID, uh, convert it into an integer and check to see if it is not a number. So that way we ensure that we're only passing in numeric strings and then we can convert them accordingly. So 
const parsed id equals parse int id just like that and then we'll use the uh is not a number function to check if parsed id is not a number so if this condition is true if parsed id is not a number then we want to return response dot send status and we'll just do 400 which just means invalid um a bad request okay uh and now we can continue so what we'll do next is we want to find the user that we're trying to update but we want to get the user's index though we don't actually need to get the user object just the user index and even with the index itself we can use the index to um, retrieve the user by referencing it using the square bracket operator on the array itself so i'll show you what i mean by that so first let's grab the index uh, of where the user is located so i'll call this const um, find user index and then we'll reference mock users and i'll call find index so now we'll pass in the predicate function and we want to search for the user by its id so i'm going to reference user which is this argument in the predicate callback function and then we'll search for the user by its id so user that id is equal to parsed id okay not id but parsed id because we just converted it from a numeric string into an actual string so now what we'll do is we do need to check to make sure that the the index is not negative one because if we actually don't find this user if this predicate returns false then that means the return value of find index is actually negative one which means that that user is not found by its id so we'll check if find user index is equal to negative one and we'll return a status code of 404 so response dot send status 404 if find user index is equal to negative one so if find user index is not negative one that means we actually were able to get the index of the user based on the predicate function right over here so that means we can use find user index to access the user that we're trying to update okay so hopefully that makes sense now let's go ahead and do this let's go ahead and reference mock users and then we'll use the square bracket operator and pass and find user index in between the square brackets just like this so this allows me to access the element at the mock users array by the by its index and remember we're updating this entire user object so i can just simply assign this user object to whatever this object is now keep in mind that since we are using a put request remember we are updating the entire um, object itself. We're not updating only one or two fields. We're updating the entire thing. Okay. And we're updating the entire thing based on whatever the request body is. So let's say, for example, if the request body is missing certain properties, but those properties are currently existing on that user we're trying to update, then that means those properties will no longer be on the user once we update it. But there are some properties, though, that you never will update at all so for example if you're using a database and once we do get to it you'll see that we're never going to actually modify um, the id at all because the id is auto generated by the database server so let's leave the id alone so i'll keep the id as parsed id just like this but everything else all the other fields will come from the request body object which is this body object right over here so i'm going to just destructure body so that'll take all of the field all the fields from the body object unpack it and put it into this new object right over here okay and since we are not going to be passing in the id in the request body that's also okay as well okay so what we just did was we kept the id the same and whatever the user passed in the request body is going to be used to update the user okay so if there were values that we did not include in a request body well they are now gone assuming that the user had those values defined so 
let's go ahead and finally return a response. Um, let's send a status code. Send status of let's just do 200. You can send 200 or 204, but I'll just keep it simple and send 200. And now let's go ahead and click new request. Let's select put and let's change this to localhost port 3000 slash API slash users. And now we're going to go ahead and update the user using a put request by the ID. So currently we only have seven users. Let's update, uh, let's update Jack. So the ID is two. So for the route parameter, we're going to pass two. And remember, make sure you have put request selected. We're going to go ahead and select, select the body tab and let's pass a request payload or request body. So remember this, okay? We are trying to update Jack, this user object that has the ID of two, username Jack and display name Jack. If I want to only update, uh, let's say the username, but I don't want to update display name with a put request, then I must include all of the uh, current values as well, okay? So for example, let's update uh, username. So let's update it from Jack to Jackie or Jackson. And let's keep the display name as Jack. So we'll assume that we're using the same value, which we are. Click send and you can see we get a 200 okay. Let's go ahead and make a get request. So let's do new request get the user by ID of two. You can see now we updated the username, but we also did override the display name because we passed that in as the request object. We passed that in the request object as well. But now watch this. If I omit display name and then I click send. Now watch this. When I request the user by ID of two, you can see that it only gives me, uh, it gives me the correct user, but we only have username now okay that's because we omitted the display name and so that just pretty much gets uh removed okay it's pretty much just taking the request body and using that request body to update the entire user object as a whole of course we're never updating the id as well now watch this if i remove username and i click send and if i try to get the user of id 2 it just gives me this object with only the id field so hopefully you're starting to understand what exactly the put request is. Now, of course, if this is not what you're trying to do and you only want to update a partial, uh, the, a, a partial part of the user object, so you only want to update the username field without having to uh, worrying about passing in the display name or other fields because your user field can have, your user object can have a lot of different fields and it can be a nuisance to pass all of those fields in the request body. So this is where patch comes in. Okay, so we'll work on the patch request next, but I just wanted to show you this as well. If I were to just pass in a invalid ID, it's going to give me a bad request. If I pass in a valid numeric value, but that ID did not exist in the array or that user cannot be found in the array, it's going to give me four, four not found. So that is good. Okay, cool. Yeah, so hopefully that makes sense.